Welcome back to The Cinema Arts. Thank you for supporting independent cinema. I'm Jerry Hara, the host of a podcast called The Offering, which is mostly horror, but always genre. Glad to have you here tonight. Thank you. Hit the concession stand. Let's have some fun. Come on. It's a party. 17 years after its premiere, right here on July 22nd, 2007, Lost Suburbia premiered, a four-part horror anthology, which is now a part of the cult cafe. Six Long Island independent filmmakers came together to produce this labor of love feature anthology based on local haunted house legends that have plagued their childhood nightmares. The four short films are based on the hangings of Sweet Hollow Road, also known as Mount Misery, The Lady in the White, which is the ghost of Mary's grave, the abandoned Kings Park psychiatric facility, and the Native American tale of Lake Ronkonkoma. Lost Suburbia is half documentary, half narrative style. The fictional films are preceded by documentary segments that explore the legend's origins and feature interviews with experts on the subject such as Long Island historian and award-winning author, Ghosts of Long Island, Stories of the Paranormal, Carrie Ann Flanagan Broski, joined by medium and paranormal investigator Joe Giaquinto. Also featured were the hosts of History Channel's Weird U.S., Mark Moran and Mark Skirman, along with historical photos, location footage, and testimonials by locals who have been affected by the legends, supernatural or otherwise. Filmmakers Paul Natal and Pete Bune first met while working in the Skyroom Cafe at the Cinema Arts Center. After discovering their mutual love of cinema, Natal came up with a short film idea using the Cinema Arts Center as its location and their workers as the actors. That short film was called Unreal. While looking for a leading man for Unreal, Bune introduced Natal to Sean King, another local filmmaker and actor that Bune had worked with on the Long Island public access sketch comedy show called Slacker TV. Natal and King discovered that they were both working on ideas based on the horrific folklore and urban legends that they grew up with here on Long Island. King then introduced Natal to Chris Dusca Rosinello, who also had an idea about the Montauk project, which was the original fourth story of the anthology. Ultimately, they figured, let's combine all of these short films together and make one feature-length movie. In 2004, the four filmmakers held two fundraising events, one being held in the Skyroom Cafe right here at the Cinema Arts Center. They produced a series of four trailers that the directors acted in for each other's promotional teaser. They managed to raise $2,000, which was split four ways. Each were given a paltry budget of $500 to produce their own documentary and narrative short. Shorts. These would all be combined together to form what we know as Lost Suburbia. Auditions were held in Cinema 3, where people not only from Long Island, but from all of the parts of the country came to test out their acting chops, including Misery Love stars Cody Lightning and Elizabeth Brizenden, who were West Coasters that happened to be crashing in Brooklyn. Mary's Grave star Jennifer Leia Turner, who also traveled all the way from North Carolina through a snowstorm to audition. Production began with Sean King beginning principal photography on Mary's Grave in May of 2005, followed by Paul Natal with Mount Misery. They were filming on the actual locations where the supposed horrific tales took place, making this whole affair a lot scarier. Peter Bune didn't have a completed script until he was ready to shoot until July 2005. What a shock. When it came time to film Lady of the Lake Ronkonkoma, the filmmakers thought that the beach resort style setting wasn't scary enough. So Sean King suggested a spot by the Nisiquag River, which had more of a spooky atmosphere. But the establishing shots were most definitely actually shot on Lake Ronkonkoma itself. Ultimately, the fourth story, The Montauk Project by Chris Dusca Rosinello, had to be dropped because it was too epic in scope. There were too many location and budgetary restrictions in order to make it happen. The story had many similarities that would eventually become the cultural phenomenon, Stranger Things. And once again, the producers of this film are owed a check by Netflix. In 2006, married filmmakers Terry and Elizabeth Smith joined the team to produce the Kings Park Psychiatric Center short called the Institute for Mental Hygiene. Terry Smith also jumped on as the main editor of the documentary portions of the film. Sadly, actress Juliet Bennett, who went by the name of Christina Barrows and portrayed Lucy in the Kings Park Psych portion of the film, passed away in May of 2022. Nearly a year after its initial release, the cast and crew reunited at the Cinema Arts Center parking lot to film a short comedic film called The Bag, which would play before subsequent screenings of Lost Suburbia as it went on a roadshow style screening tour all over Long Island in New York City. So as you can see, from soup to nuts, the Cinema Arts Center is responsible for everything this production had to offer. Without it, there would be no main headquarters, no auditions, no screenings, and no meeting of the minds. So we'd like to extend our gratitude to Vic, Charlotte, and Dylan Skolnick 
for not only what they did for the filmmakers of Lost Suburbia, but also for the community of Long Island. And for that, we thank you. I'm Jerry Hara, host of The Offer. It's actually a podcast. Show that's mostly horror, but always genre. Folks, make sure to get your snacks at the concession stand, your Coca-Colas, your snow caps, whatever it is that you're into, and please enjoy the show. Enjoy the show.